Hi, David Hood here, the Dallas SEO Geek, and I want to talk about the SEO services that I can provide you. It's important that you find someone that can do the whole range of uh, the SEO services because if you just do a little bit of it, it might get you a little bit of results, like maybe the second page or a third page or maybe even the bottom of the first page. But usually that's not going to end up with money in your pocket. There's a lot of web design people out there who say they'll do SEO, and yeah, they'll do a few basic things, but they really don't know a lot about it and they're going to be able to probably get you uh, somewhere you know you might not show up nowhere but you'll show up somewhere but that's not really going to again mean money in your pocket so you need someone that can do the whole the whole range and that's what i can do and in addition to some other things so seo all starts with what's called keyword research and these are the search phrases these are actually keywords that people are actually typing into the search engines and i'm giving an example of dallas plumber um and what you have here is you have a uh, the uh, I, I went ahead and marked this myself. The the uh, the city, the search phrase. This is the exact amount of time people are typing in a month. So sixteen hundred people a month are typing in Dallas Plumber. Now this data comes exact right from Google. So um, it's pretty accurate. Uh, it's not. There's some smaller ones that they don't show. There's a lot of search phrases that are brand new that no one's ever searched before because people are getting more sophisticated with how they do it so there's always new searches and then there's a lot of searches that they that aren't shown here because uh, they get searched a very small amount of times and so it's not worth it to Google to even show it um, and here's this is the pay-per-click if you were to pay here this is about how much you would expect to pay in, in this area and uh, that's important to know because it just it's it's a measure of competitiveness and uh, Dallas Plumber is very competitive it, it's it's just there's other reasons to know it but it's important to know um, and there's also a lot of searches uh, I mean, look at look at all these low volume searches so down here so these are nice to get as well so it's important to know those those searches um, because or, or how, what else are you, how else are you going to target something you you don't you don't know that's there. You got to know where the target is. So this is really critical, and it's not just look at the data. It's also you have to kind of look at it and analyze it. And I'll, I create a, like a pivot table, and uh, which summarizes it by city, and try to find the amount of broad searches. So these are exact searches. Um, this is broad, so this means how many times people type in something related Dallas Plumber. It's important to use that. And actually, I come up with a calculation based upon some numbers that I know, like what percentage of people click on first, um, and what the value of the traffic is for for someone. So the value of a close, uh, and stuff like that. So uh, I think this is actually pretty low for like a plumber, but whatever. I try to come up with conservative estimations of what the traffic is worth to you. Because sometimes right here you notice, you know, it's just not worth it. So you just you 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 can stop right here and not go into all the other stuff and just be like, look, you know, there's, maybe you'll do a few basic things, but other than that, there's not a lot of traffic, or the traffic isn't very valuable for you, or it's highly competitive. So it's very important that you know someone who also can take this keyword research and analyze the competitiveness of the search phrase. And I won't go into that because it's very detailed, but basically, I can look at um, maybe I'll, I'll touch on it a little bit. I can look at how competitive someone is, and here, I'll, I'll give it I'll give a quick summary. So here's a tool that I've got integrated into my searches, and um, so uh, let's see. This is the num main number I would look at, and I won't go in any more detail than that. DA is 60, 64. That's very high. Um, now that's because it's a major company. So let's do Cohen Plumbing, a local company. 40. That's still really high. This is an exponential scale. So if you're at 50, you're going to be higher than 80 to 90 percent. Now this isn't the only measure. There's a lot of other things to it. But you need someone who's able to measure that because sometimes something's really uncompetitive. And that way, the price is less. It takes less time to, to, to do it. It costs me less. It's less work for me. And again, I can pass on that, that cost savings to you. So there's two major parts after you get done with the keyword research and competitive analysis. There's two major parts that you need to do to take action on to rank. And that's on your page and off your page. So I'm going to start with on your page. So let's just use uh, Cohen Plumbing, for example. OK. So one of the first things I always look at to see if someone's doing SEO is uh, the title of their page. Here, let me move this down a little bit further. So if you can see at the top of the screen, um, Dallas Plumber, Dallas Emergency Plumbers, Plumbing Repair Services in Dallas. Getting this title right is actually pretty important. You, you want to know the search phrases. So they have the top search phrase. They're, they've done the research. You know, the top search phrase is Dallas Plumber. 
Surprise, surprise, that's the first word in their title. The order of the words is important. Putting these search phrases, the keywords in there exactly is important. But making it look somewhat natural is also important. You don't want to just stuff as many keywords as you want. But if you think about it, this title, you only get one title on your home page, and it's a very small, limited space. So Google puts a high priority on this and thinking, how relevant is the site? So you, you want the search engines to know how relevant you are. You also want quality content in here that people will actually read that has related text. So this is good. They have they have a good amount of text here. It's not a lot. They could use be better text. Um, and they've got a lot of links to sub pages, and that, I think that's helping them. So they probably rank okay for like some of these cities, like Addison Plumber, if someone's searching. Um, uh, so and then they have more of it down here. So Dallas Emergency Plumbers. Addison Plumber, so they have, they have multiple links, so that's that's good, um, and they have their phone number up here. It remains to be seen how good their site is as far as someone clicking on it, because one thing that Google recognizes is that they track how long people spend on sites. So if you click on a site and you go back after five seconds, you click on the next site, and then you never return, that second site eventually is going to outrank the first site, all things being equal, because Google sees, oh, well, people are clearly more interested in that. They go to that and they don't come back, or they come back after five minutes as opposed to five seconds. So you want to be able to keep people on your site as much as possible. And there's several ways that I have of doing that. Um, and like I talked about, you kind of you want the proper linking structure, not just on your home page, but on your other pages. And that can really go a long way towards SEO. A lot of people focus on the off page a lot. Uh, there's some people who just do a little bit of on-page, and there's some people that all they do is off-page. But you want to tie them together to get the maximum benefit, and because there's a lot you can do on your page that people take for granted. Um, there's really advanced stuff that I can do uh, that, again, I, I don't want to go into it on this video, but just know that there's some really advanced techniques out there on your page that can make a big difference even without some of the other stuff. So the second thing to look at is what's called off-page SEO. And so I'll go into that briefly here. Basically, Google is a popularity contest. The more links you have, the higher quality the links, the more trusted the links, the more Google is going to like your site. Also, the more relevant to the, whatever you're trying to search for, the easier it will be for you to rank for those relevancies. So you can see this is the domain authority I talked about. But also, this is an important number here, linking root domains. Okay, so how many... They have 330. That's pretty good. Um, and I, I don't know how high quality those links are some of them are high quality this one doesn't look like a very high quality link but they've got that's a good amount 333 3000 links is a lot um, i usually use this as a better this is usually a better metric how many different sites are ranking to to it uh, rank linking to it not how many total links they have so every site they have about 10 links on average from a site that's a lot um, it's you, you get uh, much less value from the second third fourth and fifth link than you do from the first link. The first link gives you most of the value, but you still get more some value, so this is not completely ignored. Okay, so you also want relevant links. See, and this is, I think this site might get, might get penalized uh, because if you look at the quantity of the links, and this is something I'll talk about, you want a natural, this is called your anchor text right here. You want a natural anchor text distribution. I was gonna show you the quality of links, but now I feel like I have to talk about the, Anchor text. Uh, so, what is anchor text? So, in this case, it's what you click on. So, Addison is the anchor text here. Highland Village, Dallas Plumber. That's the anchor text, and the anchor text counts sort of as a vote for that search phrase. It's not 100% everything they consider, but it's a very important piece of the puzzle. So, if you you get a hundred, you know, 2,768 links from Plumbing Dallas, you're probably going to rank pretty well for Plumbing Dallas. Let's see, plumbing Dallas. See, there they are. So, you know, this, I, I, I suspect that they'll get penalized for this at some point. It used to be you could link a thousand times plumbing Dallas and nothing else, and you'd rank well for plumbing Dallas. But Google is able to recognize with algorithms that this is unnatural. Um, now, they do have other links, and so that's probably helping them. Um, but they've only got a, a handful of different types of link and again about 90 percent 80 90 percent of their links are plumbing Dallas I, I think this is going to uh, get them penalized at some point so one of the things you want is you want a natural anchor text distribution yes you want your search phrases to be an anchor text but you want a lot of branded Cohen plumbing 
and your URL. These these two types of links are really important. And then you also want let's see if they've got them. They don't have any like click here's or this website. That's very important too. You need to have that because that's natural. And uh, you know while this might work now, I try to build stuff that works not just now but many many years in the future. Um, and uh, because I'm trying to, I'm thinking about how Google wants it to be and how Google sees it, and I put my things very natural. So it takes a little longer to rank, but at the same time, I'd rather it take an extra couple months for you to rank and it stick than for uh, me to rank you quickly and then it not stick. So uh, these, the, it, it is also important that these links be relevant. So this is from an art site. Okay, that's not very relevant. Yeah, it's helping them, but it's not as good. Okay, in style cars. Yeah. Not really helping them. Um, now these are these are also the quality of the links. And this is an actual site with like a links page. How, what's the quality of that helping them? You know, it's probably a, it's that's a pretty decent quality link because it's it's not. There's a lot of more low quality links than you you think um, than this. So like blog commenting, that's a pretty low quality link, but it can still help. But if you have a ton of blog comment links, that can hurt you. But these are these are Google algorithmically would consider these to be sort of editorial links which is what they like um, it's not on the main page but it's on a sub page so that so this is a this is a decent link from the quality of the link not necessarily the relevancy of the link just like you want that anchor text distribution to be natural you want the timing of your link building to be natural you want it to come at, out at a, at a natural pace you don't want to build 2,000 links in one day um, and now that's possible and it doesn't always hurt you but it, you run the risk so you want to build your links uh, gradually over time and uh, so that that's a major part of uh, so this is a major part of competitive analysis but it's also how I would go about building off page uh, your off page presence for you this is not everything but it's a major piece of the puzzle I do have SEO trades uh, secrets um, to do some of this especially this off page stuff and some of the on page stuff and a very very high quality and very very high re highly relevant site um, links that that are very powerful that you know so one super powerful link is worth more than a thousand low quality links by a lot and so you don't have to have a ton of links to outrank someone you can have less a lot less links and still outrank them if your links are really high quality and really relevant and so i have some tech some really advanced techniques that help me get those um those those kinds of links uh so the the last thing is beyond seo there's there's uh there's really four steps to being successful online. Number one is creating a plan that fits your business. Okay, and so SEO isn't always the best for every business. There's sometimes there's other things that people can do that's more more effective. Uh, there's a better going to give you a better ROI. But once you do it, once you pick what's best for your business, you need to attract targeted visitors to your site. And usually SEO is the most cost effective way to do that if you have someone who does it well. So that's step two. So now that you've got visitors to your site, what do you do with them? The step three is converting those visitors into leads or uh, basically leads or prospects. So right now this is good. They have their phone number up here. I would probably make it bigger, maybe even put it up in the top right. I think that's where a lot of people expect it. But they have it in multiple pages. Call now. You know, they have a call to action. That's important stuff. There's some other things that they can do to improve their conversion rate. Um, then the fourth step, and it's actually the most profitable step if, if you did the first three right, it's because it's very, very low cost, but it's also uh, it's very, very powerful in multiplying the amount of sales you get from your visitors. It can double, triple, quadruple the amount of sales you get per visitor. And it's called setting up a sequence system. And you probably already have a lot of this, which is like follow-up calls, but there's tools out there, uh, uh, internet marketing tools, that can make this sequence system very inexpensive and also uh, completely hands-free if you want it to be and so that final step is something that I can help you set up as well so uh, I hope you've learned something and also you learn that uh, what kind of services I can provide for you and if you have any questions feel free to give me a call or contact me and uh, I'd be happy to uh, uh, take a look at your website or at least uh, answer your questions on some of the services that I might have so uh, again my name is David Hood I'm a Dallas SEO geek and thanks for watching